right? So tonight what I want to teach you is the meridians. The meridians there is they're like rivers running through the body. We've got rivers of energy. We've got one for the lungs, and one for the large intestines, one for the stomach, one for the spleen, one for the heart, one for the small intestines. And they're constantly flowing. So these rivers of energy are constantly moving. If there is an imbalance in the body, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, what happens is it's like throwing a big rock in the river. So what happens, instead of it flowing, it hits against it, and it causes, in a river, it would cause the water to flow up or it would go the other way. In the human body, it causes some form of disease. Not a disease, but a dis-ease, because things aren't flowing the way they should because there's something in the way. Somebody upsets you, uh, you get hit, you get in an accident, um, something happens. And the reason that you know this happens, you're in love and you're having fun and everything's exciting and you're just buzzing and somebody next to you sneezes and it doesn't bother you. Okay, another scenario. You're bummed out, you don't feel good, you're run down, somebody sneezes and you've got a cold, a cold. So it all has to do with how our energy is. If our energy or the meridians are flowing, you know, when they're flowing with a lot of energy, that's why we work out, that's why we do yoga and qigong and tai chi, because it keeps everything flowing. The idea is, if, is to keep everything in flow and balance. So there's like I said, 14 different meridians, and what they do is they all have to do with a certain energy. So if you come to me and I take your pulse and your tongue and I do a diagnosis, and I find out that um, one of the systems is low, that means I will put needles or I'll do some type of energetic work on that particular meridian to open up the flow, and when that opens up, you return to balance, you know? And the reason that they teach Tai Chi and yoga, what it does is you can keep yourself healthy. There's, in the West, the doctors really don't teach us how to take responsibility for our own health. We don't take responsibility for our own health. I'm sick, I go to the doctor, he does whatever it is, and then I come home and I call him in two days and I say, I feel better, I feel worse. So there's really no education on saying, do this and this and this and this will keep you healthy. You know, what do they say? Wear boots in the rain, don't go out when it's wet. You know, they don't really give us that formula. And I think maybe in China, because the population is so big, and in India, the population is so big, that they make sure that people know what to do, because they just can't treat a billion people. You know, I'm not sure if that's the reason, but it would make sense that if you had a large population and you had a, you know, some doctors, how we, how will we treat everybody? So you do this every day, and what it'll do is it'll keep your wrist and your elbow flexible, and you, so every day you do that, and then you don't have wrist and elbow problems, or they put a few needles in, or they do something to those joints. And then by you working it every day, then what happens is you don't have any pain or discomfort. In this country, you have a pain, so we give you a pain pill, an anti-inflammatory, or possibly we do some surgery. We try to correct it that way. Um, sometimes you need surgery, but if you can avoid it, it's a great thing to avoid. Because when you cut the body, the body doesn't know if you've been cut in the street by a by a hoodlum, or if you've been cut in the operating room, all the body knows is something cut you. It doesn't have a distinction. That's a doctor, that's a crook. It doesn't know about that. So, <laughs> so when you're cutting, let's say I cut here, what happens is the stomach meridian flows through there, the liver flows through there, so that's affecting two of the organs. When that happens, the energy, the regular flow, that river, gets disrupted until you, until you correct that. It can be corrected, but, and we don't think of it. Got appendicitis, of course, 
That's because it's gone too far and they have to take out the appendix. But we still have that scar. These types of things that I'll teach you tonight will help somewhat. And then I'll, as we go on through the weeks, we'll be able to share. Tonight, you know, I'm going to focus more on the healing aspects. There's three different aspects. One is a warrior, one's a healer, and one's a priest. So usually, as a young person, they would treat, they would um, teach you martial art practices. And then that would build into the warrior thing, and, you know, and then you do your warrior thing. So you go through these martial practices, and all the martial practices are very disciplined. Stand like this for an hour, and you're shaking, and you're laying your shoe, and you're going, oh, I'm sick of this, you know. <laughs> well, all those practices are to build your lower strength and to build your legs and to ground you and to give you the discipline. And then after the warrior, then you get into the healer and then you learn the different healing techniques, how to heal your own body, how to keep yourself healthy, how to keep your friends healthy, how to keep your family healthy. Um, and then the priest comes into the spiritual aspects and the spiritual aspects involve the meditation, you know, all the different practices. So that's where they get warrior. Tonight I'd like to go over the meridians and then we'll do some exercises and I'll teach you how the meridians flow and then what you can do with it. Okay, so I need a model. This is a key, this is a key plus. This one I got. Oh, okay. So I'm going to push down and let's see roll this up. Okay. Okay, that's a strong muscle. Let me try out this one. Okay, that's a strong muscle. So if I did something, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. That's the muscle again. Oh. Uh -huh. you know, right. It blows up because there was a slight trauma. So your body will recover from that quickly. So if I went like this, and I test the muscle again, resist, strong. That's very strong. Yeah, it's because we recover quickly. Now, if we take a bigger hit, you know, somebody hits you with a hammer, it's going to take a lot longer. You have a series of meridians. One starts right here, it's the lungs, and it goes out the thumb. Then the large intestines, it starts at the large finger, and it goes up to your mustache and then over to the other side of your nose. And the stomach meridian starts under your eyes, it goes around, up, down, over the breast. And what happens is we don't, this is so silly, we don't check this in Western medicine. If you have a breast problem, breast cancer, they go, oh, breast cancer, we're going to give you chemo, radiation, take off the breast. Well, the meridian starts here. So if this runs down, it hits the teeth, it comes up and it goes down, it goes right over the breast. In biological medicine or in some of the Chinese medicines, they would check the teeth because if there's an infection in there, a focal infection or something going on, this would drip down, follow the meridian, mm. and the first thing it would hit the breast. It's not checked in Western medicine because there's no money in fixing your tooth. It's better if we take off your breast, we make more money. Yeah, right, makes no sense. Okay. I want to go through these meridians and then we'll all practice them on each other. And, uh, oh, this, come on back up, I've got another thing. This happens all the time. Guy and girl, right? Right? So, guy sees girl and he goes, hi. Let me test this muscle. <laughs> yeah, but you got, got to do that. Hi. You look in my eyes, I don't even know if you had eyes. Hold up again. What happens is, it's just, a, it's just a thing. So how do you protect yourself? So I'll show you some things tonight. So when somebody does that, they don't steal your energy. Because basically, they throw against you. Energy vampires. And guys don't notice it that much because... Not too, maybe girls are doing, but guys blow it off. You know, the girls are, oh, how are you doing? <laughs> anyway, it's just part of nature. Okay. Okay. I think we should show how to do that. How to, how to, so you don't, I'll give you the secret for me. You imagine that you have like a pipe right here. And the pipe's got a faucet on it. That you can turn on and turn off. And then another one right on the top of your head. And that has a faucet on it. And you turn. So your energy, it's going to like flow down from the heavens and then come out the pipe. Or go up here and go up the pipe. So 
for pipes open. Okay, bless that skin. So let me test this muscle. Hold up. Hold up. Close this one, leave this one open. Hold up. Hold up. Okay, open that one. Hold up. Close this one. Just your imagination. Close it. So what happens, usually, if you come to attack me, you close down, right? You're going, hi, man. I'm going to close down. So when we close down, what happens is that's when we lose our energy. Close both of them. Got it? Hold. Okay, open both of them. Open, open, okay. Let's test. Hold, hold. See that? Yeah. What happens if somebody's coming to take your head, so I can do the same thing. So you have them both open, okay? How are you doing? Hold up. So what happens is when we lock or we close that energy, that's when everything blows out. So the idea is, as long as you keep everything open in the flow, then you don't get one. So there's um, these 14 meridians, and I made this little chart and a little poem, because um, when, when I went to school, there is so much information, and it's pushed at you so quickly that it's impossible to remember all of it. So I, we made up this little poem. It goes, Lucy's lover, Stuart, spread her small butt, kinky hips towards God's lips. Okay, that doesn't really mean anything. But what it does is, Lucy is lungs, large intestines, our lovers is large intestines, Stuart is stomach, spleen is spread, her is the heart, small intestines, small is the small intestines, butt stands for bladder, kinky is for kidneys, the hips are the heart constrictor, and the heart constrictor is, is, the, is the sac around the heart, like the pericardium. No? Okay, so we have our heart. Uh, some people get pericarditis, where they get an inflammation around the heart, and they get an infection there, and when that happens, they have the, you know, these heart problems. So there's the sac around the heart, it's called the pericardium, and we're gonna use heart constrictor, which is another word for it. Then in the West, we don't have, we don't have something called the triple warmer, and the triple warmer is more in oriental medicine or Chinese medicine. The triple warmer has to do with the waterways in the body. If there's an imbalance in the water, what happens is you have another imbalance in your body and you get things like um, uh, swollen legs, lymphedema, cancers of the lymph glands, stuff like that. Your next one, God, stands for the gallbladder. And the last one is the lips, stands for the liver. It's Lucy's lover, Stuart, spread her small butt, kinky hips towards God's lips. It goes like this. The lungs start right under the clavicle. So it goes lungs, large intestines, stomach, spleen, heart, small intestines, on this side too, the heart, small finger, small intestines, butt is the bladder, so the bladder goes if you get a headache, a lot of times you'll get a headache and it'll, it'll be up in here and it'll be in the back of your neck. It goes like this. It goes over the head, comes down, makes a smile, and then it's on the outside. It goes all the way down and out the sides of the legs. Bladder. Kidneys starts at the bottom of the foot and goes up. K27, right at the top, that's the last. Then the pericardium goes from the nipple out the middle finger. Then this ring finger is the triple heater, the triple warmer. So the first ring is the wedding ring, and the second ring is the earring, and the third ring is a ring around the ear.
Large intestines, which finger is that? It's a large finger, right? Small intestines, oh, small finger. The pericardium, the sac around the heart, oh, it starts at the nipple and comes out the middle finger. Easy to remember that one. So there's, some of these are real easy. Um, now the gallbladder starts at the eyebrows. This one has a lot of gall, but it goes to the back of the head, then it comes back up to the frontal, to the front, then it goes back over, down the shoulders, around the rib cage, and out, and out the second toe, and then from the big toe, you go all the way up to the liver, and then we didn't include these central and governing meridians. As long as those meridians are flowing great, you're healthy. So I was driving out west, and I was with a friend. I think we were in Colorado, and we were going to California. So we're driving in the car, and we were driving out in Steve's car, and we were practicing the meridians. So if you put your hand right under your clavicle, and then you run the energy out the thumb. So the color is white, so that's lungs. So if you go lungs, 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 lungs. So sometimes if the lungs are congested, and the lungs have to do emotionally with sadness and grief, if we have a lot of sadness and grief in our life, we're not going, I'm so sad. You know, we usually get congruent, so we squish our lungs. Um, the system's an interesting system because it goes on, because it's connected to the five elements, fire, earth, metal, water, wood, and it's connected to these meridians. So there's all these emotions that are connected with it and physical things like just your breathing. If you want to clear the lungs, what you can do, like I said, the lung starts right under the clavicle and you run down the lungs and then back up. So if you go like this, you can actually clear the lung. Like if you were, like if you wanted to clear uh, a pipe, right? You take something, you push it in the pipe and then you pull it out and push it back in until you clean it out. Same thing, you're, whoosh, whoosh. the color's white because it's on a metal element. So you're going like this and you can clear the lung. So on this ride to California from, from Colorado, this is what we did, lungs, 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 um, large intestines, large intestines. And we did this in, I don't know how many hours it took us, but we have this, by the time we got out of the car, we knew them, it, because what it, like anything else, it's repetition and practice. Once you have it committed to memory, I mean, in the beginning, you're going, this is silly, but once you commit it to memory, and then you start doing it, you get more sensitive so you can feel if there's an imbalance somewhere. Like if you're tight in the shoulders, you say, wow, that has to do with my gallbladder. Gallbladder and liver, it has to do with anger. Am I angry? What's going on here? And you start to release those things, and I'll give you some ways to release them. But first, I want to teach you how to do the poem again. 